I've said this once, I will say it again. The Democratic Party establishment is not just going to let Bernie Sanders march easily to the nomination. They're going to do everything that they possibly can to stop him. Now, there's an article in the Daily Beast that basically talks about how Democratic Party operatives are doing everything they can to convince other individuals, namely big donors, to create some type of coordinated campaign to attack Bernie Sanders. But the donors don't necessarily want to do that yet because I think they probably realize that this could backfire tremendously. If you attack Bernie Sanders, then we will respond by giving him more of our money. So that way he could counter these attacks. So the establishment is getting desperate. But nonetheless, Wall Street goon Steve Ratner, who is also a Democratic Party mega donor, confirmed that, yeah, um, we were right all along. There is some type of coordinated campaign to stop Bernie Sanders if he does emerge victorious in Iowa and New Hampshire. We don't necessarily know what that's going to look like. Nonetheless, it's happening. Take a look. The more that Bernie Sanders rises the more, and I see this very much now happening already among my activist Democratic friends, the more people are getting scared about a Bernie Sanders candidacy for two reasons. First, because they think he'll lose, and second, they think if he wins, he'll implement the kinds of policies uh, that I outlined a few minutes ago, which uh, are so far away from the center of the Democratic Party. So there's a lot of activity around trying to, quote, stop Bernie, although it isn't called by that just yet. And that's, uh, and, and Mike Bloomberg could well play a role in that as an alternative to, Ber uh, to Bernie Sanders. But as you also point out, for that to happen, Biden has to, in effect, not do as well as people expect, whether it's second, third, or fourth. Biden has to has to weaken in the course of these first four early primaries. If Biden wins uh, Iowa and then New Hampshire, let's say, and he's obviously strong in Nevada, strong in South Carolina, it may well be game over. So this is the least surprising news ever. We already knew that there were efforts to, to form some type of uh, group, a super PAC, something to go after Bernie Sanders because, you know, Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, they can't necessarily go after him directly, even though they're doing that. Uh, but this kind of, you know, this damages the facade of unity that the Dem Democratic Party establishment has been trying to maintain. So you have outside groups trying to spend to defeat Bernie Sanders themselves. But again, this is a risky move because they know how enthusiastic Bernie's base is and whatever they try to throw up, any barriers that they put up to stop him, we will respond accordingly, right? So you may have some Democratic donor who bites and spends five to $10 million on ad buys to defeat Bernie Sanders. But then guess what we're gonna do? We are going to donate to Bernie Sanders in response. We donated, what, uh, what was it, $4 million after the last Democratic debate to Bernie Sanders when Elizabeth Warren was trying to smear him. Do you honestly believe that we're not going to do that again? So this is why, you know, the establishment, according to a lot of uh, articles that have been released since he's been surging more, they feel like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if they attack Bernie Sanders and go after him, they risk galvanizing his base even further. But if they do nothing, then he can very well win. So they know that they have to respond. And as Steve Ratner admits here, yeah, they're going to do just that. So um, he says there's a lot of activity around trying to stop Bernie, although it isn't called by that just yet and mike bloomberg can play a role in all of that as an alternative to bernie sanders but for that to happen biden has to not do well as people expect um so basically they're banking on joe biden joe biden is who they are throwing their weight behind but if things go south for joe biden which they very uh, well may it's mike bloomberg and what he kind of subtly hinted at is that you know what if we have to We'll run Mike Bloomberg as a third party candidate. Now, Mike Bloomberg has stated that he is more than willing to, um, you know, support whoever the nominee is, even if it's Bernie Sanders. But I'm not so sure. I think that that's just what they want us to think currently. So that way, if Bernie doesn't win, we don't feel, uh, you know, the need to not vote for them. They're going to do everything and they're trying to think two or three steps ahead, but they don't realize that everything that they're planning. We already are anticipating, and we know it. And I think that even the most apolitical, non-savvy consumer of political news knows that the establishment hates Bernie Sanders. So as all of these attacks come in and stories about how the establishment is tormented about Bernie's rise, I think that this will kind of have a Trumpian effect where it only makes him more popular because it proves to people that he's the real deal, hence why moneyed interests 
are going after him so, you know, vociferously. Now, what this really does say is that this unity, you know, um, facade, I guess, if you want to call it that, that the establishment has been trying to put up is bullshit. It is the facade that we all thought that it was because whenever there was someone like Pete Buttigieg or Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren who was doing great in poll after poll, we were told to unify. There was even talk that maybe Bernie Sanders should drop out and support Elizabeth Warren so, you know, we don't split the progressive vote and she's stronger and, you know, going up in a general. But now all of a sudden that Bernie Sanders may very well be the nominee, are they screaming unity? Of course they're not. Now we're seeing individuals like Hillary Clinton come out of hiding to attack Bernie Sanders. We see attack after attack on not just Bernie Sanders, but his supporters. We see the Bernie bro myth coming back from the New York Times where they are quoting literal online trolls to bolster their point about Bernie Sanders' army being trolls when back in 2016 reports showed that Bernie's supporters were the most docile group. They were the least aggressive online when we're comparing Democratic campaigns. Um, so I want to share an article from John Iderola of TYT. He wrote this for The Hill because he really articulates everything that I'm feeling and it exposes the establishment. Like this unity talk was a scam because that unity that they were preaching, all of a sudden we hear none of that now that Bernie may very well be the nominee. He writes, last November, reports indicated President Obama was considering speaking up to stop Bernie Sanders from becoming the Democratic presidential nominee. Leaks from just this week indicate he is once again considering doing so. Obama's former campaign manager, Jim Messina, spent this last week attacking the frontrunner as the worst candidate, defying both logic and all public polling. The one-way war between Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders might be the ultimate example of this. Earlier this week, Hillary Clinton's latest vicious attacks against Sanders continued a pattern of behavior we've seen repeatedly for years. Let's briefly note that every word of Hillary Clinton's petty attack was untrue. Quote, nobody likes him. Not only do people like Senator Sanders, but he regularly polls as the most popular politician in the country. He's certainly the most popular senator. And despite the centrist war cry that he's not even a real Democrat, he has the highest favorability rating of any candidate pursuing the presidency. But I digress. Where is the unity in these constant attacks? Where is the concern that these smears will eventually weaken Bernie Sanders in the general election if he becomes the nominee? They're absent because that's not how unity works. Calls for unity silence progressive critiques. For the establishment, though, anything goes. That is exactly it. This article is perfect. I'll link to it down below. This is a scam. We are engaging in asymmetric warfare where the establishment can throw jabs at us and if we counterpunch, even if we just defend ourselves, we are um, beaten over the head. We're told that we're being too divisive. We're being told that we're not real Democrats. We're being told to shut up and accept whatever crumbs the establishment's nominee will offer us. It is one gigantic scam. So now is the time for the so-called unity Democratic Party loyalists to put their money where their mouth is and actually live up to the expectations that they set out for us. If you genuinely believe in unity, and you weren't just preaching that conveniently to get us to shut up, then preach unity now. Now that Bernie Sanders may be the nominee, preach that unity now. I will give credit to one person, of all people, Terry McAuliffe, who I'm no fan of, who's a Clinton ally, who basically responded in an article, I think it was Politico, and he said to everyone who's worried about Bernie being the nominee, Get over it. We have to unite to beat Donald Trump. That's someone who I can give credit because he's practicing what he preaches. He is being, you know, genuine in his urging for unity, right? So anyone else, I'm more than willing to give credit if they are genuinely, like, wanting unity. If you speak out right now, speak out right now. Because this primary isn't over. It's not a foregone conclusion, right? We still have to work really hard to get Bernie to win, but... You're hurting the effort. If you truly believe about unity, you are hurting even your eventual nominee. If Pete Buttigieg wins, God forbid. Now, when you're proving that you don't really care about unity, how are you with a straight face going to make that pitch to us? So this is a problem with the establishment. Time and again, they show that they don't care about unity. They are incredibly disingenuous. They have a different set of standards for us that they don't apply to themselves. 
They claim to care about transphobia, for example, and harp on Bernie Sanders when he, you know, um, elevates the Joe Rogan endorsement, but then they embrace Hillary Clinton with open arms as she has made very transphobic statements that are harmful to the trans community. Like, everything that they say, it's all bullshit, and they're really exposing themselves as the frauds that they are. Now, we already knew that. Bernie supporters knew that they were frauds, but the problem for them is that more, you know, apolitical people, people who don't follow politics like you and I as closely, they're even realizing that the Democratic establishment is frauds. So if they truly care about beating Republicans, now is the time when they still say that they are committed to unity. Put up or shut up.